Hey, Brandon. Hey, Alan. And welcome to Dice Over Everything, the Miniatures Gaming Podcast. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I'm sure Great. it's still watchable, even though I haven't gone back and watched it. But for anyone who hasn't, I highly suggest it. But whenever Gur shows up, though, you, he's almost guaranteed to yell like taquitos, and you yep. just you just kind of want it to happen, right? Even though like uh, maybe it should get lame after a while, you still <laughs> want it to keep happening, right? <clears throat> I remember the Doom song. He only sung a few times. You expect random stupid shit to happen, but basically the same sort of random stupid shit to be done every time he shows up, and you're just like, it's great. Yeah. Would would you say if you were playing like a campaign game with miniatures, you put one stupid character in your your war band? And it's just like it just keeps running off to do its stupid thing. Is that is that funny or is that just annoying? Um, no, it, it can be fun as long <clears throat> as uh, we're not on the same team. <laughs> well, fine. well, so if I so if I build a goblin slayer after the the goblin slayer anime on the note of TV shows, and someone brings a, a goblin warband and goblin uh-huh. slayer just runs off to fight his entire army by himself, and I'm like, no, goblin slayer, I need your help, and he just runs away from my warband. Would that get old? Yes, but only because I only ever watched the first episode of Goblin Sayer, mm-hmm. and it was a degenerate uh, anime. Well, that's not gonna stop me. So you probably you should probably choose like a better anime that is less degenerate. Mm. Maybe one that slays <laughs> mice. Because you might be bringing mice. No, because I'm oh. gonna be running my slayer. No, it also can't consult- be anything cute or whatever. Don't take secret of Nim or or whatever kind of thing. Mm, who Fine, is killing, you can use Goblin kill- Slayer. Those were the rats of Nim or the mice of Nim. The rats. No, uh, we got mice. It doesn't count. Oh, Redwall. It would be Redwall, right? They're mice. Mm-hmm. Let's go but find. I never watch Redwall, or not watch. Sorry, Red Redwall. Uh, it doesn't count. You have to have a visual for it to make a figure. It's how miniatures go. Anyhow, on a note of building war bands, that might be crazy, might not be crazy. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the uh, second episode of our Frostgrave 101. So I guess that makes this Frostgrave 102. Uh, getting into Frostgrave, or is this Frostgrave 101 class 2? Lesson two. It's only level one. It's not like a second year. Course. Okay, so it's, it's like Frostgrave 101. Course. Yeah, class two. Uh, building your war band. Yes. So I don't think we're going to talk about like themes for building your war band because that's more like about the models and not. Yeah. So that's about... like what we were talking about before. You know, uh-huh. a bunch of mice. My my current war band is going to be a bunch of. Well, my next one, sorry, is going to be a bunch of mice. Yours apparently is going to have one degenerate, uh, crazy person, goblin slayer. Which I don't even really understand the reference. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we have uh, any this... fans around to appreciate it, so I might not do it. Yeah, and who knows what crazy war band Les is going to bring? I think he said he's going to do Chaos Dwarves, not Chaos. Yeah, Chaos Dwarves. Hmm. So some classic-looking uh, old hammer dwarves stuff. Dwarves with mm-hmm. yeah, old hammer stuff, which is, <clears throat> would look amazing. So yeah, our our war bands might all be <clears throat> crazy. Uh, yeah. So on the note of like choosing your theme, like before we get into this, I would say that like it's perfectly Wait, we fine. We said we're to... not doing theme, right? Yeah, but this is a disclaimer. It's a disclaimer <laughs> okay. before we get into the okay, not theme. Sure, sure. Because like Frostgrave yeah. offers you a whole bunch of different like types of soldiers that you can build your warband out of. And if you have like if one of those the models you want to use fits a particular type of that soldier, just go ahead and take it. Whatever, Frostgrave is not that competitive. But yeah. I think what for what we're going to go into is just like how you might want to compose your war band so it doesn't feel like you're screwed. So it feels like yes, you... and and oftentimes when you choose a a unit, you want it to uh, fulfill you you want it to fulfill 
like the image that you have of the unit in your head. So you don't want to choose a unit called something, and then it turns out it does something entirely different in the game. Mm-hmm. So for that, we're going to go through basically all the different types of units uh, that you can recruit as a wizard in Frostgrave to help build your warband, and basically where they slot into uh, based on your rough types of wizards that you could be taking. And and the we're, we're going to go through the spells later, but we'll mm-hmm. probably talk a little bit about archetypes of wizards and which uh, soldiers would fit well into that warband. Yeah. So I think we'll just start off with like the soldiers in <clears throat> the base second edition book, because there's a whole bunch more that come in the new expansions, the old expansions that like the FAQ gives you, not just yeah. the FAQ, it's actually in the book, tells you how to sort of adapt and use them. Yeah, and so if you want to hear more about uh, getting, like if this is already too advanced and you want to learn more about a little bit of the wizards and what you need to play, there is Frostgrave 101, which is, I think, episode 101 of Dice Over Everything. So you can go back there and check it out and then catch up after you've uh, listened to that one and and, and uh, listen to this one. Yep. So for these soldiers in the main rulebook in second edition, uh, the soldiers are split into two different parts, uh, normal soldiers and specialist soldiers. Yeah. And so basically, <clears throat> so you've got your wizard, your apprentice, mm-hmm. you, which you do have to pay for your apprentice for, I guess, you start off with 400 gold. you got to pay 100 for the apprentice. You basically yep. want to do that. The book tells you you want to do that. It's not yep. worth being a special snowflake. So you're down to 300 gold after that, and you've got to decide yep. how to spend that accordingly. So from the, yep. your war band is 10 guys, so you're left with mm-hmm. eight slots after that. And the maximum number of specialists you can have is four. And like your specialists are kind of your better level dudes. But then mm-hmm. through the rest of the game, in general, you're going to have to have four sort of like lower level dudes. So do you want to start with the lower level dudes? Uh, I, I guess we want to start off by just saying when you start off your warband, I think mm-hmm. we mentioned this in uh, uh, Frostgrove 101 Lesson 1, yep. uh, is that you won't have enough gold to recruit four specialists. So you are going to have to make uh, some compromises when you start off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you might want to think about where you want to end up yep. uh, based on the soldiers so that you don't waste gold and you don't have to throw away a soldier uh, halfway because, you know, they're no longer cutting it, right? Yeah, because there's so, some of those specialists we'd consider to be, like, better versions of the others, and we'll get into that. Yeah. So when you – because, like, the, the difference in price of the specialist soldiers ranges from 75 to 125. Yep. So really, like, the price range, the price difference between, like, your sort of basic version of a particular role of specialist and the what could be considered the better version of that role isn't mm-hmm. huge. So you may just want to hold out on to get the better version yeah. rather than compromising at the beginning. So I'm not saying you can't just toss them later, but yeah. we've sort of found from playing that you're better off getting the one you want in the end rather than just trying to cram in more specialists at the beginning for the heck of it. Or you can do what I do and get a couple of specialists that you really like and then fill in some crappier guys and then just run them crazily at the opponent and eventually they'll die. That's <laughs> that's not that, that's a thing because, I mean, you're going for the treasure in yeah. the middle and someone's got to sacrifice and if your opponent doesn't want to sacrifice yeah. as hard as you do, yeah, that that's is That's why I don't thing. like archers. Because they they sit back, they don't tend mm-hmm. to die as bad. Yeah. Uh, but you have to. <laughs> so they're just taking up a slot when you could get a better archer, like a ranger or a marksman. Yeah. So All I right. guess the thing to mention is that your archers, your rangers, your basically your ranged guys, your bowmen, your crosswomen, are the specialist soldiers. So yep. you can't just load up on eight of them. Yeah. All right, so let's go through the normal guys in the main book. So mm-hmm. I guess we'll name them all first, and then we'll go through them one one by one. So they are the thief, the thug, the warhound, the infantryman, the man at arms, and the apothecary. Yeah, so those are all the standard ones that you could take all eight of if you wanted to, but yep. given you have gold, some of those do cost gold though. But yep. you yeah. So the main thing less. is. Thugs and thieves are free, mm-hmm. so you don't have to spend any gold on them. If you have a guy that 
uh, I think it, yeah, if, if uh, so they're great because, you know, if, if you, one of your important guys dies and you don't have any uh, gold, you can just yep. recruit a thug or a thief. So mm -hmm. these are basically kind of low lies hangers on that are just uh, lured by the uh, promise of getting a cut of the treasure of your war band. So you don't actually have to, to pay them any money up front for them to join your band. That's the kind of theme of them. Uh, thugs are a little bit slower and, and better at fighting, and thieves are a little bit faster and have a little bit more willpower. So basically how it breaks down to is because speed is uh, quite important in the game, uh, because uh, You're the racing main for treasure. point yeah. of the game is yeah to rush over, grab treasure, and run away. Uh, thieves are actually very important in your starter war band because you want them to grab the treasure or uh, and and get out of there faster than the people that are chasing them right if your opponent can catch up with the guy that's you know trying to run away with treasure uh that's not good right because then they can get bogged down and then you can lose the treasure <clears throat> mm -hmm. so you probably want at, at, at the very beginning uh, a couple of these because the thieves have a movement of seven while the thugs have a movement of six Meanwhile, the thugs have a fight of two, while the thieves have a fight of one. But and on top of that, thieves do minus one damage because they only have a knife. Yep, they have the dagger. <laughs> so, in general, you want to fill them out. Like if you in in a later warband, if you need to slot one of these guys in, they're basically these two things are just the leftover guys. Like if you don't have enough gold for a better guy, you will take these guys. Yep, so you're going to have them around. It's fine. For yeah. a little while. Until you start and, getting rolling in the money. If you ever do. <laughs> you know. Yep. And thieves have a little bit more longer lasting impact later in the game. Just because of their movement 7. And the fact that they're literally they're just, just there to grab treasure and go. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. most of the movement 7 guys are specialists. Right? They're all very good. And they're much better than thieves. Mm -hmm. But for a guy who's just runs up quickly and grabs it and runs away, you will often even have a thief later on. Whereas the thug, because they're the fighting version mm -hmm. of the thief, there are a lot of different other fighting units, so you, you'll end up replacing them. But yeah, at the like beginning, I would say, how, how many would you have of both of these? I think you'd have three thieves, possibly, because you're trying to go for as much treasure as possible. And uh -huh. they may just leave the board with your treasure so nobody else steals okay. it so i'd say two thieves two okay yeah because um <clears throat> basically when you play frost grave you're gonna have one central treasure two mm -hmm. tre two other treasures that are roughly easier for you to get and yep. so if you you will always be fighting over the center uh but the other two you might want to pick them up and run away quickly and that's what the thieves are, are there for or to run forward and try to get to the central treasure before the opponent but you don't want to have too many thieves because the whole point of a thief is not to it, fight yeah you not don't to want fight if, at they, all. if they're fighting something's gone wrong like the goal <clears throat> for grabbing treasure is to send someone grab the treasure start coming back and then send someone out to intercept their guys who are going to try and yeah. get on your dude who's running away with treasure so exactly if, if so so like me, speed is your biggest asset for treasure grabbers almost <clears throat> yeah so when you have three if you have three thieves you have one thief for the central treasure, like one thief for the central treasure, that he's probably going to get caught, right? So you might mm -hmm. want to have, even though, you know, a, a thug is slower, you might want to have the guy that fights a little bit better, right? Yep. And if if the battle starts turning against you, having a thug is better. It's, they're better able to hold the line. They're better able to fight the other specialist soldiers that are a lot better. So to me, two thieves is good. Uh, and you, you, you might have less these once you have better specialists, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's my opinion. Yeah, so we then get to the Warhound, which cannot grab treasure as the third yep. basic soldier on the list. And you can get a kennel later, which allows you to take the dog as an 11th member, which is yep. great. But Doesn't before, take a slot, yeah. So you yeah. will always, if you keep on playing, you will always get a Warhound eventually. Mm hmm. So, Just to get, my, yep. Yeah, so my thing is, 
if really the theme of your war band you wanted to have a war band in it or a war dog like one okay maybe you compromise the quality of your war band by putting one in just for the cool theminess because maybe your your wizard has some sort of pet it doesn't have to be a dog you could be like yeah this other other like war cat is with my witch which is what i did eventually but for the most part because it can't grab treasure and its fight is a little lower its health is a little lower it's sort of not something you necessarily jump right in with um yeah but because you will always you know as as things go on you will there will once you get a kennel there's always this place for warhound Mm -hmm. it's not it's kind of fine to have even if you get it early i will say though that uh warhounds they're only 10 they're they're not free Mm -hmm. they are 10 10 gc um and they are i actually find them quite useful so their big thing is that their movement eight uh, but they only have eight health and they have minus two will but but that movement and they can't pick up treasure like you said mm-hmm. but again when we're talking about movement right we said movement is so important the though the we we talked about how you know you're you're going to try and chase down your opponent yep. a warhound because it's move eight uh it's a perfect unit to try and to chase things down because it su- moves so much faster uh so to me i find it kind of useful to slot in uh if you depending on what else you took if you have the 10 gold i don't mind slotting out a thug for a warhound mm-hmm. just to be able to have that extra maneuverability the ability to hold people up uh, and especially if you have spells that complement the warhound mm-hmm. uh, one of the best ones is transpose so this is mm-hmm. a thing where that makes warhounds always good because warhounds are just fast right that's that's the big thing uh, and transpose is a spell from the illusionist uh, that allows you to swap places between two units. So, yeah, so naturally, if you have a fast unit that can get into the perfect spot, swapping them out is super good. So yeah, like for your speed speed five specialist who is never going to get there, and maybe you complement it. Like if you're going to take the faster speed guys, maybe you double down on that by doing some sort of like leap to get them to go ahead faster. Maybe you give them the fleet feet to get them to go ahead faster. For your, yeah. <clears throat> if your intent is to like intercept their guys really well by using yeah. speed seven guys, maybe even the war dog speed eight. Maybe you maybe go that direction with your spells, but you don't have to do that all the time. There's other ways yeah. to to reach out and stop their guys who are out there with treasure. All right, so yeah, so warhound mainly intercepting, still useful at the end because it basically doesn't take up a soldier slot. Once you, once you it does 400. take 400 gold, so it is often uh, quite late into the game uh, when you finally, depending on, on on your treasure rolls, but just having an extra guy is great. All right, next one. Next one are the two, I almost like see these as competitors, because these are your two better fighters oh, I don't think so. in the standard soldiers. No, you say there's no competition. So the next, no two, competition, yeah. the next two are the infantrymen. And the man at arms. So the, if you're just thinking of the models for these, the infantryman has a two-handed weapon, and the man at arms supposedly has a shield and a hand weapon. Yeah. So sword and board is the man mm-hmm. at arms. And they both have three fight, which makes them one fight better than your basic thug. Yep. Uh, but the man at arms, because it has a shield, it has mm-hmm. twelve armor, where the infantryman only has eleven armor, but it has the two-handed weapon. So the, yeah. normally the two-handed weapon, it would be comparable because they both have three fight, uh, except for the next two, well, the next three stats, basically. Mm-hmm. So the man-at-arms has plus one will, and more importantly, the man-at-arms has plus two health. So the infantryman only has 10 health, and to me, this is really the deal breaker mm-hmm. uh, that makes me not want the infantryman, except for at the very beginning when I just need to cram it in for another unit. Uh, and the reason why is because the infantryman is worse, for sure, than the, the man-at-arms overall, because it has two less health and one less armor, so they're way less survivable. But the infantryman is 50 gold, whereas the man-at-arms is 75 gold. 25 yeah. gold doesn't seem like a lot, right? You know, mm-hmm. a lot of the treasure rolls, you're going to get 30, 40, but, like... 25 gold can be a lot, especially at the beginning of the game. 
and especially on your beginning warband. Because a lot of the specialists are 125 gold, mm -hmm. uh, if you take two of them, basically the only guy you can slot in, unless you want to just take all thugs and thieves and warhounds, is the infantryman. And that's why, even though I think they suck, I always take one at the beginning. So I usually take two top-level specialists at 125 and mm -hmm. an infantry. And that, to me, is the spot of the infantryman. And then you kick them up to the curb as soon as they die. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I did not do that for my current warband. I went two infantrymen because the models I wanted to use That's had crazy. big swords. And I'm like, you're an infantryman. This doesn't matter. But on the other side, it depends on the spells you're taking, too. Because mm -hmm. I took the strength spell. So the thing is, like, mm -hmm. extra health is good if you're going to lose the fight. Which, you know, you're going to lose fights. But if yeah. your intent is to, like, buff your guys so you're usually only fighting at advantage, right? but that's not, you don't always get to do that, then yeah. maybe if you're intending to increase the strength, because when you do damage with a two-handed weapon, you get an extra plus two on top of your roll <clears throat> for that weapon. And if you've increased that by another two, you can seriously knock some people out in one shot now that you've got a two-handed weapon true. versus a normal weapon. <clears throat> So. You did buff your infantryman running into bar my barbarian and did cut him down with a good roll, which is very annoying. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the higher higher damage output, the more likely you are to one one shot one your hit. opponents. Because usually it's going to take two or three shots if you're not hugely yeah. buffed. But once you start doing things like that, maybe you want the two handed weapon just to start one shotting your enemies. So especially the cheaper like ten, ten health guys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so are you saying that you would want infantrymen at the end game just because of the two-handed weapon if, over if the you're running, arms? If you're running spells or you think you're going to roll up magic weapons that give you higher damage to push oh. you over that one-shot kill threshold, maybe you're like, yeah, the infantryman's going to work for my warband. But if you sure. think you're going to go for armor buffing spells, then yeah, you go for the man at arms to get closer to that max 15 armor with all of the possible bonuses. Okay. In my opinion, mm -hmm. just stick the man at arms. If you can afford it, mm -hmm. I think he's just overall better. Uh, being able to survive also means you get to kill the other, the opponent better as well. Yep. And so they also survive getting shot at, from afar uh, from archers or wizards as well. So, um, yep. If uh, you don't if you don't skew towards more damage output, then you're probably looking. Towards the man yep. arms, yeah, and they even a plus one will, which is as wizards get stronger and their spells, mm -hmm. they're able to pull off their spells better. Uh, that plus one will definitely helps. So to me, the other thing, so like I said, those are the two different opinions: infantry, men, man at arms. I will say, uh, man at arms is the top level standard soldier uh, with a movement of six, fight three, armor uh, twelve, health twelve, and one will. He's a solid guy for 75 points, 75 gold. And if you actually compare them to the specialists that are 125, mm -hmm. yep. uh, he is not, he is pretty close actually to the specialists. Yeah. Right? You are actually paying a premium for the specialists. Uh, but having an army full of men at arms does not mean like you're, like, Mm -hmm. You can still fight a guy who has all all specialists, right? With an army of men at arms, they're a good solid unit. If you eventually you want basically want to replace all your thugs uh, with an infantryman or a man at arms, right? For that kind of front line unit that just runs out, tries to get treasure, grabs things, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Which um, then the brings one us thing, the okay. one thing to mention though, uh, is that both of these units have equipment. That means that. If they pick up treasure, they will get minus one fight. So, uh, I think, or maybe minus one to all rolls. So, that does mean that um, thugs and thieves, because they have only one weapon, they don't get a minus to a fight, but infantrymen and men at arms do. So, they become like when they pick up a treasure, they become actually worse at fighting. And then, in that case, Plus two armor, plus two health of the mattered arms, you know, helps a lot. Yeah. All right. So the other thing is, I guess just mentioning that those two aren't like they're not terrible. <clears throat> they're not terrible fighters. When you go look for your specialists, because you know you can probably get some decent fighting in with those two, you're 
you're leaning towards having a few shooters near specialists because you can't get yeah, any of them with your standard soldiers. So we'll, we'll get to that part. But then we get to the last standard soldier in the, the Frostgrave book of the Apothecary. Which... Great unit. This is the versatile unit. And this, to me, is the kind of person you might replace your thieves with. Yep. Uh, so Apothecary has six moves. So it's not actually fast like a thief, which is why you might actually still have a thief. But six move, fight one. Uh, will three, but health 12, 75 gold. Uh, but it's sp- at, with a staff, which gives it minus one. Uh, so it does get minus one because it has a staff uh, if it picks up treasure. Um, but the big thing is that it starts with a healing potion that mm-hmm. it can give to other people in base contact as an action. So this unit is super useful uh, when you're tra- like later on in the game, when you're trading spells, you're trading shooting, or you're just for your wizard when they're cutting themselves to, to uh, cast spells. Mm-hmm. Um, you might want to heal back your wizard so that they don't get killed by a stray arrow. And that's what the Apothecary is for. Yeah, It's just like off- an extra plus five health. Yeah, because often there's going to be a treasure close to you that anyone could go yeah. ahead and grab. So it'll probably be your Apothecary, who has no intention of going to fight, to just go grab an easy-to-get treasure, come back kind of yeah. close to your wizard where they can get off the board when they need to, and then help somebody out on their way out with the treasure because they were never going to get into the fray anyways. So Yep. So, yeah, the way I see it, the way I generally do it, uh, depending on how long you play, like if you have shorter games or longer games, oftentimes we just only play four or five turns just because of, of the time limits um, of when we play. Uh, but for longer games, you can have your apothecary sit around your wizard, and then once they've used their healing potion, grab grab a treasure, uh, and then get out. Yeah, and luckily they have three will, so hopefully they won't get mind controlled quite as easily. <laughs> some exactly. some jerk face always takes yeah. mind control. Yeah, so to me, uh, in in my end war band, I almost always have one apothecary. Mm-hmm. So uh, remember, you have you'll have four units, and these are basically the standard soldiers. When you bring them, you're we'll go over a, a, a later on because there are expansion units. But if you're taking the main ones, you'll be taking these guys, right? Yep. And uh, so four. Four of your got your units. Every you know, even your end war band will have these units. And for me, it is uh, apothecary, um, war well warhound. You, you will always have because you have the free one. But it's yep. apothecary, and then for me, three man at arms or even two man at arms and a thief because you still might want the movement seven one depending on what else you take. Mm-hmm. That's your end goal, in my opinion. How about you? I'm just thinking for my next war bands, I may just ignore all it's that gonna good advice. It's going to be four infantrymen. <laughs> entirely, and just be like, this is what my models look like. I don't care. Because <laughs> Frosco is about having fun. But yeah, if you... That's true. There's no reason, like, if, if you're not set on the models. To, like, yeah. Here's what they are. Or if the all models right. kind of resemble a bunch of things, they just have a knife, you know, you take them as what plays well. Yeah. All right, so those are the standard soldiers. Now, on to the specialists. So eventually, so at the beginning of, uh, you know, when you start your warband, you might have, you know, two, three, maybe even one specialist soldier if you buy a bunch of men-at-arms uh, because, you know, they're good or an apothecary. Um, but there's a bunch of these guys. And if you want any ranged combat outside of your wizard, you need to take specialists. So on that note, so this, we just want to start with the ranged ones and go to the combat ones after. So we're doing more of a direct comparison rather than going straight down the list. Uh, we'll list them all and then we'll go back to the, the ranged ones. Sure. All right. So they are Archer, Crossbowman, Treasure Hunter, Tracker, Knight, Templar, Ranger, Barbarian, and Marksman. Mm-hmm. So, so what? Do half of them have shooting, it looks like? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. No, more than half. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. So the ranged ones are Archer, Crossbowman, Tracker, uh, Ranger, and Marksman. Mm-hmm. Now, to be fair, I think the Tracker shouldn't exist. So... <laughs> 
Yeah. What is that? Because it compares uh, with the ranger and it has no purpose. Or where are we going yes, with this? That's exactly so these it. are these are both sort of on the premium end. The tracker is so, 100 and the ranger is 125. So yeah, we're not. And these so, are not the cheapies. So the the tracker is to me. So we'll we'll go through the all of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the archer is yep. so there's two different types of bow crossbow and uh and a normal bow a crossbow uh, after you shoot it you have to spend a movement action to reload it um I so, guess often, any action. so often yeah. your crossbow may turn into turrets yes um but the crossbows do plus two damage whereas the bows can move can you know move and fire every round without reloading mm -hmm. so the only one of uh well, I guess the two ones that have crossbow are the crossbowmen and the marksmen. And then the other three have bows. And so the archer and crossbowmen, their point is basically at the very beginning of the game uh, if you need ranged combat because they are cheap. They are, well, yep. relatively speaking. They are 75 gold each, whereas... Uh, the tracker is 100, and then the ranger marksman are 125. And basically, mm -hmm. it's two different tracks, right? You have the ranger, the the shooting side, and then you have actually uh, the bow side, and then you have the crossbow side. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just a track of you know crappier versus better, right? So, in the same way, you know, like a thug is, you could say, is like a a crappy man at arms. Uh, an archer is basically like a crappy ranger. And then a crossbowman is like a crappy marksman. But they are slightly different. So archer and crossbowman both have movement six, have fight of one. So they're actually pretty bad at close combat. And they only have a yeah. knife. So they're as good as a thief in fighting mm -hmm. uh, in close combat. And then they have a shoot of plus two, an armor of 11, and a health of 10, and will of zero. And they're 75 gold. So these guys are basically, uh, in my opinion, like the infantrymen. At the beginning of the game, you will have them, but once you have gold, you'll be upgrading to the better versions. Yes, the question is, do you even take them at the very beginning? Because you're you're probably gunning for the the further versions. The thing is, with like the crosswoman to the marksman, because you're turning into a turret, you're not in quite as much danger of dying or just taking hits. Mm -hmm. So if I find if you take the crosswoman at the beginning, it's playing so safe that yeah. often you're not going to have to worry about that extra armor and the extra health. I mean, someone's going to shoot back at you, but your guy's not going to get, like, swarmed because you're not you're playing so far back with this sort of thing. Yeah. That I don't see, like, the difference between the crossbow and the marksman being such a big deal. But when you get into... Because it only has plus one fight versus yeah. it as so, well. And fight is also anti-shooting defense as well. Mm -hmm. So... Crossbowman does it well. It's more likely to die when it gets shot versus yeah. the marksman. But, um, but they usually stay more out of trouble, so I don't. Yeah. I don't worry as much about taking a crossbowman in the start. But the archer, though, the whole point of bows is you run and gun as you go yeah. towards the middle. So if you your your fight's going to come up having to like fight in hand to hand combat. So the the mm -hmm. lack of the fight ability is an issue plus like the lack of speed is also a bigger issue because your goal is to get to the middle yeah. get treasure while gunning so you really you you want those extra stats that come from the higher yeah. versions and so both the tracker and the mm -hmm. ranger are higher versions of the archer they yep. have plus one move so they're seven move each mm -hmm. uh, they still have the plus two uh shoot uh but the tracker has only plus one fight whereas ranger has plus two fight um otherwise they are roughly the same except the tracker has one less will too and has a staff instead of a Ew. hand weapon yeah no, so you, you, gotta go, you gotta win for 25 gold probably. like mm -hmm. it's just not worth it like 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 you said they're moving around and here's the thing when they're moving seven like we talked about how great it is that a thief has movement seven when your guy who shoots also have movement seven that is really good Oh, yeah, you can reposition to get sight lines on people really well. You can yeah. just run over and get the treasure mm -hmm. when you need to. After you shot the guys, right? You shoot in, and then you come in, grab the treasure, and try to run away before, right? And although they get minus one because they have so much stuff, because they have bows and stuff it, for fight, um, 
first of all, that just makes them as good as a, a thief because uh, the ranger has to fight. Uh, mm-hmm. Second of all, uh, you don't when you grab a treasure, you don't even want to get into close combat <laughs> anyway. Yes, <laughs> so and, it's not quite so you, as bad. So you did grab the treasure. Now, before completely leaving the board, you just hang out near the edge of the board and just start shooting yes, the other guys. That's correct. And you're not. You're in a little bit of risk if they shoot you back and your guy goes down and someone else has to go pick up the treasure. But it's not. As but they have as, eleven armor and twelve health. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they have a decent ability to drive. So in my opinion, the ranger is the best unit actually in the game. Uh, besides your wizard and apprentice, of course. Yep. Uh, overall, movement seven. So like we said, high mobility. So can decently grab treasure. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's just so... It has top level shooting, right? Two shoot with uh, the bow. Technically, that's all, all bows. So top level is one level. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then, you know, with a plus two fight uh, and the hand weapon means that they can actually defend themselves. And if you're lucky, you can still even, you know, survive and beat a knight. Whereas the tracker with his staff in one fight, this to me is even worse than the infantryman. Because mm-hmm. why would you take, like, why would you spend so much money on something that is not as good as the thing that's 25 more gold? That is the best unit in the game yeah just hold so, it for more gold mm-hmm. yeah so to me tracker don't even use the tracker unless again you want to model something with a staff and you have some you know at the very beginning of the game the points work out so you need a hundred gold thing yep yep all right i think i think we've covered the shooters there all right yes so now the more interesting stuff Whereas the, the melee specialists, and it's interesting because these guys, because the man-at-arms is so good, all of these guys have to be better than the man-at-arms at some way. And they're all different in, in the, the way that they're they're better, mm-hmm. um, except for one guy that is also not good, but we all take because he looks awesome. So the, the four different types of specialists with um, Just uh, hand-to-hand. hand-to-hand are the treasure hunter, the knight, the templar, and the barbarian. Mm-hmm. So, so, guess, so how do we start with the treasure hunter and go back to comparing sure. it with what we just talked about? Uh, yeah, so why is the treasure hunter good? It has movement 7 and but, fight 3. But but my ranger could have speed 7, Alan. <laughs> yeah, but it has fight 3. Yeah, it's one more fight. So but, you know, that actually worth does it? matter, mm-hmm. yes. It is actually worth it, in my opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. So it has the same life. It has the same willpower as the Ranger. Uh, but it's 25 less gold, which is fine. But with three fight, it only has... A, a, like the, the equipment that it has does not get a minus one when it picks up a treasure. Which means when he's running away, he still has fight three. Hmm. And the fact that he's fast at seven, at seven and fight three means he's actually in terms of the the things uh, in the main book he is the best at running over and getting treasure and some and trying to make it off the board and surviving yeah. or running and trying to chase down one of your enemies and killing them because he has fight 3 so he has a decent chance especially when you buff him up mm-hmm. so again you're really paying for that 7 and even though he's only 100 gold unlike the tracker he has a clear delineated uh, use, whereas the tracker's just a crappier ranger. Yep. Uh, that you will want at the very end of the game. Like you might, like a lot of people just have have uh, treasure hunters, a bunch of treasure hunters, and their end game because they're really good. They're basically the super thief. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, if you, I like shooting yeah. a lot, but that depends on your play style. If you really want to just yeah. like rush your opponent full on. Yeah. And like not just hang back and shoot, which I don't know, I guess I played a bit on the safe end. If you like getting in there with your whole warband, then yeah, yeah, I can see the treasure hunter really making that work for you. Yeah, a lot of people use treasure hunter. Again, they're just an upgraded thief. So like if you have thieves or you want to take other things, you might end up with thieves in the, your end one. But if you are one of more melee, like you said, in their warband, treasure hunter is a great way upgrade to a thief. You can basically is just better in every way than a thief. Mm-hmm. And can can tussle with the top level fighting units, which are the Knight, Templar, and Barbarian. 
Yeah. So both the knight and Templar are similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, they so the knight is supposed to be the the, the version. He's he's like the man at arms. He's the upgraded man at arms in some ways because he's got uh, the shield. Because mm-hmm. he has the shield, so he has thirteen armor, which is the highest armor uh, for uh, starting armor for any soldiers, and it's only one more armor than a lot of the well than the man at arms who has twelve armor. But that matters. Uh, yep. And then the Templar uh, has 12 armor, so the same, uh, but he has a two-handed weapon. So how they get this high armor is they have minus one um, speed because they're equipped with heavy armor. Now, technically, this also makes them bad at swimming, but swimming That's- doesn't really come up because you're in Frostgrave. You know, all the legs are generally frozen. Mm-hmm. So... Heavy armor guys work great, um, but the minus one speed is the big deal. So these are the guys that are uh, – oh, the reason why they're really good, which I almost forgot to mention, is they have fight four, which is the highest fight that you can have uh, besides your wizard. Mm-hmm. Who uses be- – yeah. Yeah, because that's adding to all your damage. Like these are the guys that really kill people. and Yeah, so they hit hard. So the knight is the version that holds the line. And can just like chop people down slowly. And the Templar mm-hmm. is the best unit to kill things. Like if you want things to die or you want to kill a knight, for example, like a Templar actually has an edge over a knight. A knight is more likely. So th- technically a Templar is more likely to win any fight because they have a 200 weapon. So yep. they're more likely to just kill the guy that they fight. Whereas the knight, uh, because of the, the dice rolls in uh, Frostgrave, um, the more rolls you have, the more your your opponent can luck out and have uh, roll a 20 and kill you. So even though the knight is able to hold the line, the Templar is actually more likely to win any fight than a knight. However, so, so that might seem like the Templar is better than the knight, but the knight, that's not how the game plays, because the knight is the best at holding the line by quite a bit. Bit actually, just that plus one armor mm-hmm. uh, really helps it take a bunch of hits and keep on ticking. So depending on your warband, let's say you have like a whole bunch of range guys yeah. uh, and then fast guys, uh, you might want something like a knight, like especially if you have ranged units or, or softer units, you mm-hmm. might want a knight instead of a templar because even though a templar is more likely to win fights, he's more likely to die too. Whereas a knight can hold mm-hmm. people down so that the rest of your warband can work around the knight. Okay. So both these guys are yeah, what were you gonna say? Sorry? I think it comes down to as well, like depending on maybe if you roll up certain weapons on the special magic item tables that possibly yeah. let you get more armor, maybe let you get more damage. Yeah. Once you've got those, you might lean towards taking one or the other. There aren't that many spells that let you buff armor though. I think there are only two. There are three. There are three? Is one just it's, a temporary deduction no, for damage? Four. No, there is uh, combat awareness, plus yep. one fight, plus one uh, armor, shield, plus two armor. Enchant uh, armor. Enchant armor, plus mm-hmm. one armor. Uh, yep. And then possess, which I believe is also plus one armor, but plus two fight. Mm, okay. So, like, because, like, you can only roll a 20, and if you start subtract, like, if you buff your armor up to, say, 14 on the mm-hmm. knight... Once you're subtracting that 14 from the 20, they're only left with like yes, that's true. Six. Like if they roll the Which, if, if they roll the 20, okay, maybe they have a thug, so they're getting plus two. So that's a 22. Like if they're yeah. they're 20ing on you, they get a 22. But yeah. you've buffed your armor by one on a night to 16. They just did six damage to you. To like, 16, you mean plus three. What? That's the maximum buff is 16. You said 16. You mean 14. Oh, yeah, just the 14, yes. If you just yeah. buffed your armor to 14. Yeah. So, yeah. They only do... It's only 6 damage. They yeah. only do 6 won't even damage. You. Yeah, you won't even be in... Once you hit 4, you're in the wounded state. And so now, even like, if you use mm-hmm. crits, which we don't use crits because I, I don't think actually the game needs it. I think the game is well deadly enough already. Yeah. Even if you use crits... That is, what, 11 damage? A knight will still survive, which is mm-hmm. huge. And when you're playing with crits, you expect everything to die. Yeah. But a knight is, like, the only one, when you buff it up a bit, that it can actually survive getting critted by a thug. Mm-hmm. 
at one life. Yes. But so to yeah. be fair, you can buff it up to 16. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, the armor? The maximum is 16. Yeah. I think, it was 15, I think the maximum was 15 with all your additions. Was it 15? Yeah, I was looking at it before. Yeah. Okay, 15. So 15. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, you can. So you can't possess. You can't enchant armor and also shield your knight. Just just shield it is good enough. So yeah. technically, you could take a Templar and super buff the Templar so they have the same armor as a knight. But it would take a lot more work. You guys <laughs> yeah. spend a lot more time casting spells to get to that point. So Yeah, every spell is precious. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, it kind of depends on which direction you go, but yeah, they're both... Both these guys are great. These are the guys that you want. If you want to just win battles... Um, you, you send these guys out. Uh, but you pay for it uh, with the move, which mean, which is why uh, spells that can move guys really quickly are not only good for getting treasure, but they're good to move up your knight. So if you're running a knight or a templar and you do not have any movement shenanigans, yeah. uh, they actually are kind of bad. Because mm-hmm. your They're opponent just... will grab the treasure and have run off before the knight actually makes it into the combat. Because, yeah, again, if playing, remember... If, yep. if they're playing with movement buffs, they're just going to be out of there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if they have movement buffs and you don't. So, however, of course, movement buffs change everything. Like we, we were mentioning, mm-hmm. War Dog, Transpose, Knight, love it. Yeah. Moving your knight up, leaping him, and then getting the guy on the next move. Yep. Also yep. good. Uh, yeah, uh, just just doing the good old, uh, what is it, fleet feet, just mm-hmm. to give plus two moves, so now your knight is moving at seven, great. Yeah. So, personally, I prefer the knight over the Templar, uh, because when I have models that are knight in shining armor, they have a shield. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so, I would say, like, models, whatever your model is, you know, you don't have yeah. to worry about it too much. They're both good. They're Unless both you good. have... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless like one is defense, really... one's defensive. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Which leaves the barbarian. Mm. He's got six speed. I mean, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> After so, that, he's also fight for like the knight in the tra- or like the knight in the templar. Yep. Uh, but he has no armor. He has ten armor, which is base armor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he does have. 14 health, which, if you calculate it out, does not... That means that even if they die... At, like, he dies in one hit, the same as a Templar. Mm-hmm. Because he has two more health than Templar, uh, but two less armor. Which means... Um, the, he's, he's not like... He's not like a D&D Barbarian. You're really paying for the fact that he has six movement and four fight, and he does have a two-handed weapon, just like the Templar. Yep. Um, but he does uh, have one bonus, which actually ends up coming up more often than than you know, uh, in second edition. Is he has three will versus one will? Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. Yeah, no, lots of missions cause you to have to take will checks and mind control to try and take over. Your guys from your opponents is a real thing as well. All right, so give me a pause, and we're back. Yes, from from nowhere. Who knows where we went? I'm just gonna cut it now, actually. All right, so that that was all of the specialist soldiers in the Boy. actual core book or not are we done with the i'm marks? not done talking done? you're not done with the barbarian you're not done with the barbarian okay we just be done with the barbarian no so here's the yeah. thing barbarian is faster and you're basically paying for that six fight right because yep. we did mention that the templar you know it has the top level combat but uh if they're they're slow right so they they they're they won't necessarily get into combat well a barbarian will get to combat uh, but then he'll generally die because he <laughs> doesn't survive mm-hmm. very well. Doesn't take the hits very well. No. Yeah. So to me, uh, he needs a little bit. Of, he's like the worst one, but he does have a role because he's you know somewhere in between that treasure hunter and that Templar, right? He's a little mm-hmm. bit faster. He has top level fight, four fight, two hundred weapon. If he just rolls well, he'll just win. But yep. as soon as something happens, he's gonna get wounded and then he'll drop down. Like when you're wounded, you have minus two. Minus, Minus two, 
right? Mm-hmm. So he's he, it's just not good for the Barbarian. Um, and so when you compare him to the Man-at-Arms, who's also Movement 6, I don't really find the Barbarian that great, except yeah. for one thing. <clears throat> Just he's cool a models. barbarian. Yeah, exactly. He's so cool looking. Like you want to run Conan. Like I have, I have a Conan model I'm running all the time. So I run the barbarian all the time as my top level unit, and he's terrible. That's why I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's I'm realizing dead. I could have run a yeah. Templar instead of a barbarian, but I didn't. Even though the model would be perfectly fine for the Templar, I'm just like, yeah, it's a barbarian. It was. It feels more like a barbarian the model, so I just went with it. Fair enough. And I guess the other thing, so what we have been doing, we're experimenting with, uh, we're going to be experimenting with this. We, we did it a little bit, but like, uh, we're going to do the full next campaign where the Barbarian has a a short, a 10-inch ranged weapon. And he'll it'll only be at zero shoot, and having tested out, you know, zero shoot mm-hmm. uh, weapons, they're useful, but not great and especially on a barbarian kit <clears throat> because he wants to be in close combat anyways right. i think that will probably push him up to be competitive with the knight and templar um hopefully not too good but we are going to test it out more mm-hmm. from what I, from from the times we have tested it out it was fine uh, i think we used that eight we used that eight 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 inch range weapon before but i think mm-hmm. now we'll use 10 inch one see how it goes well, basically that's... use the javelin mm-hmm. Uh, we might call it a throwing axe so that you can't give the barbarian the javelin special weapon that would that gives plus one fight, plus one move, plus one shoot. Oh, really? Well then. Yeah. And it's like the thunder javelin. It's meant to only get to give the javelin ears, which makes them awesome. Eh, <clears throat> but it would cares. make the barbarian overpowered. Yeah? If, if it came up somehow, whatever. Uh, t- technically, it's I think it's in... Maze of Malcor, which we just played, so we probably don't have to worry about it. No, so it won't come up if we don't go back to that campaign. There you go. Fair enough. Just just as a note, uh, but mm-hmm. I, I think it would be cool, right? It fits the theme of a barbarian to have like a throwing axe or a throwing weapon, right? Just mm-hmm. a 10-inch one. Uh, and I think that would be really good to give it its own uh, spot in the list. And yeah, those are all of the uh, soldiers in the main book. Okay, so once you get to the back of the main book, though, it gives you so a list of other things that exist in previous books. Yes. And I guess it's only previous books, but more books came out after that, too. Yes. So um, I think we've mentioned this before, but one of the great things about Frostgrave is that there have been a ton of supplements with special missions, which is the main reason why you buy them. But some of them do come with extra soldiers. And some of them are both standard and specialist. So um, the main thing is, uh, so so I guess we'll go through the standard ones first. Mm-hmm. So so the thing with the, the standard ones is, um, I'm kind of they against... don't take up a slot. Yeah, I'm kind of against playing them in scenarios that aren't like the book they came in, but you can like we it works. Oh, I know. You might be against it, but we're constantly running them. Oh, it's in the it's in the Brandon, rule book. Brandon like, doesn't like the fact that we <laughs> that we use them. He's like, "Why are you using this? This yeah, is exactly. ridiculous." I mean, but it, it makes sense it. because yeah, the main rule book has a good solid number of mm-hmm. of uh, soldiers, and it gives you wide breadth. There's a couple that I think are nice to add, uh, like R- Greenfield, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, so the main ones from the old books are assassin, bard. Uh, for these are standard soldiers, right? So the the normal ones: assassin, bard, crowmaster, demonic servant, javelinier, pack mule, rangifer, trap expert, and tunnel fighter. So these all have various random things uh the assassin is somewhat interesting because um do we want to go over them by the book that they come from or how do we want to jump at these things because just because people may want to pick up these books depending on them so you know why don't we go through separate them first to the ones that we think you should use and the ones we think you should just ignore 
Sure, go for it. All right. So the ones that I feel like are ignorable are the <clears throat> the assassin. <clears throat> He's got poison, you know. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, yeah, that's true. But he, he can't help people in close combat. He's just mm-hmm. kind of interesting, and it's literally yeah. you just take him because you want the cool model. He's fine. Yeah. Right, but I feel like overall the Man at Arms is better. Uh, Demonics, and he's in Forgotten Packs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other Forgotten Packs one is the Demonic Servant, who I believe helps with summoning and stuff like that. I guess it's fine if you're a summoner, but like, learn to stand on your he's, own legs. I think you also need a special. You need a special equipment, actually. Yeah, he's got no summon. costs. You can't just go grab him whenever you want him. You need a spell. So you literally, I think, need to play for God Packs to even yeah. be able to get a demonic yeah. servant. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the Rangifer is also very good, but, but uh, the issue with the Rangifer is you need to play Thaw the Lich Lord and get a book of Rangifer. So if you get that book, definitely get it. So I guess actually that's not one you should ignore. So the only other two to ignore are Trap Expert and Tunnel Fighter. These ones come in the into the breeding pits, and they're specifically special specialists to use special rules that are in breeding pits, which I believe are traps and secret corridors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and honestly, I'm not that into those special rules. I think they're a little bit too complicated for, for what they give you. And the idea of taking units just for those two things is like over the top, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It would make more sense, I don't know, if you get them for free in some some missions or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would ignore those. Now, the ones that are useful are the Bard, the Crow Master, mm-hmm. the Javelinier. Uh, the Pap Mule, and the Rangifer. All right. So we already went through the Rangifer. Like, when you play Thought of the Lich Lord, uh, you will see Rangifers because you play, play through them. They're really good. They're standard soldiers. They're they're great units. They're, like, they're like super... Um, they're, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, Man-at-Arms, except that they're really good against Undead. Yeah. So if you can buy them, go and buy them. A lot of undead show up, yep. Yeah, especially yeah, in, in, in uh, Thought the Lich Lord. Um, the Bard, I personally don't even think you should use this model. Mm-hmm. Um, it, its whole thing is to give plus one will to your entire warband. Um, this, is a, this is actually really strong against certain spellcasters because some of the strongest spells go against will, and I think it kind of throws things off. Uh, when you have a bard helping your entire warband, just a soldier like there that helps your warband not get cast spells on. And mm-hmm. it kind of reduces the strength of spellcasters. So I don't really like it in terms of gameplay, but technically they're strong. <laughs> yeah. Because they buff your guys, especially depending on, like, like you were talking about, if someone takes mind control, uh-huh. good to have a bard around. You know what? Mind control is annoying. Just annoy them back, whatever. <laughs> But but then you have a lot of other uh, spells that get sideswiped. I, like to me, I would just ban the the bard, but that's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, Crowmaster is the one that we always take in our game group. Uh, Crowmaster gives you an extra crow, an extra unit, a full extra unit uh, to play with. So you, it's another way to get a plus one more ban. So your your crowmaster is like your apothecary. They're literally there to just run over, grab a treasure, and run away yep. uh, because their stats suck. Uh, but I think they're, they're, they're basically like a thief except they have 12 life. Um, but they give you an extra blood crow, which is movement nine. It so, flies. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's basically it because it only has one hit point. Do you not need to buy the crow roost thing? I don't think they call yes. it that, but you do. Mm-hmm. Yes, so even though it says it's a standard soldier, uh, you can only have one. Well, technically, I guess you can have multiple crow masters, but only one of them is going to have a crow. So you probably are only ever going to have one crow master. Um, but when you take it, even though it's expe- even though it's um, a standard soldier, the crow master themselves take 100 gold, and the crow roost... Mm-hmm. which you have to buy to be able to take the crow uh, is another hundred gold. So oh, it's, it's like, like a, 100. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, I think so, it's 200 gold to recruit a crow master. But if the crow master dies, the crow roost stays because it's an upgrade on your building. So every fur, like if you replace the crow master, it only costs 100 gold to replace instead of 200 gold. So I think it's actually kind of balanced. The crow only has one life, but it has armor 14. Uh, so it's very good, right? To have a two two units is a great annoying thing to have another unit there to slow people down. Great for transpose, like we talked about before. Yep. Um, but because they're expensive, um, I think I think overall it, it it kind of works. And because the crow is there just to annoy because it only has one health, um, it's they're strong, but I don't think they're necessarily broken. Yes, not as like the kennel. It's kind of competing with getting a kennel. It's obviously the kennel is twice as expensive. Yeah. To get that one extra member of the warband, but the dog is better at fighting, so it's it's yeah. there's a precedent for something like that being in the game already. Yeah. So I'm kind of okay with it. Now, if you afford both the the blood crow and the war dog, now you're starting to get crazy. But mm. anyways, we've no one's done that, have they? But that's that's a lot of. No, we did in the the we did it in we haven't done it in uh, second edition, but we've done mm-hmm. it in first edition. Okay. It was, overall, it was fine. Mm-hmm. I think it. Um, there's because you know you take a bunch of different spells that can deal with crows and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. Be, next one that we said was good uh, is the javelinier. Which now, is this from... to me is is from Thaw the Lich Lord. Mm-hmm. This, to me, should be in the standard book. This is the ranged unit of standard soldiers. It's 25 gold. Uh, but he only has... He has six move, fight zero, shoot zero. Mm-hmm. So... And you would range think, is not full ranged either. Yes, and the range is only 10. So, actually, the javelin here is quite balanced. Is it 10, not 8, or is it... No, it's 10. Okay. So it's actually quite balanced and honestly shoot zero without being able to buff it at all is kind of terrible. Yeah, you can't get like a magic javelin. Like if you roll magic items, you can sometimes get a magic crossbow, magic. No, you can't. That's the one we talked about. Oh, there's a magic javelin in that's in one book. It's not in in Maze of Malcor. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. So in Maze of Malcor, javelin ears are awesome because the javelin makes them actually good because it makes them fight speed seven, fight one, shoot one, uh, which suddenly turns them on to be awesome. But besides that, they're actually like there's an argument that if you were going to take a javelin ear like late game, you just take a thief instead because they're faster. Mm-hmm. And the the zero shoot uh, because. When you're shooting uh, it, it, in ranged, you're really just going to get one or two shots with that shoot, right? Yep. Um, and then they're going to be in, in close combat. And then even a thief will outclass a javelinier in close combat. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of balanced in that way. And then the other thing is uh, in shooting, you don't win ties. So at zero shoot, like you, you lose ties. The, the attacker loses ties, which means that javelinier's don't do that end up doing that much damage and so i before they get overtaken in close combat so i think they're actually like like they're balanced i think they're quite good for the game and i wish that they were they were promoted to the main uh to the main book yeah it's not quite kind of your classic sort of soldier that you think about but like they fill a good niche in like yeah, the range exactly of options so and to be fair, like zero shoot is good when you've glowed someone, because glow gives plus three mm. to shoot. So, mm. so they need help from basically the spellcasters to become good, which to me is the entire theme of the game. It's the opposite of the bard, right? Like a javelinier sucks unless you help them with the spellcaster. The bard just makes your the other spellcasters worse by itself, which I don't like. Yeah. Um, and. Are we going to oh, keep the going with one. Uh, the Lich Lord ones that are good, or do we have another one yep. we think is good? Pack Mule. Yep. Is Which is not actually... He, he's not an animal, right? No. Uh, I think he's a human. They just call hmm. him Pack Mule. I guess you could just take a Pack Mule, though. Like, again, yeah. we just take whatever models you want. Uh, the big thing is it can have three items. Mm-hmm. It can run around with three items. 
Uh, and basically, the idea is that if you have too many scrolls, for example, you can take a pack mule, and then it can use, I believe, an action to give it to someone else. So if you're using scrolls with your wizard and you're like you're overloaded, you can have a pack mule next to him. Again, the pack mule will pick up a treasure, right? And then and then hold that treasure and then just be passing items to your uh, wizard. Uh, so that's a kind of fun thing, depending on what type of wizard you're using, just to be able to have multiple different things or potions, for example, is another thing that you might fill your pack mule with. So that's mm-hmm. that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, if you take depending like, on which one you're using. Yeah, if you take the wizards that let like, you brew potions or write yeah. scrolls, then like exactly. he fills a cool role to go yeah. with that. Yeah, by himself, he's just a crappier thing. You you just you'd rather just take a thief or a thug. But with the combination of of spell, like certain types of wizards, it'd be useful to have them. Mm-hmm. And that is all of the uh, interesting. Uh, standard soldiers because all of the new books only have specialist soldiers all right so now here's the thing there's a bunch of specialists uh they are collegium porter oh which captain collegium porter so you want me to tell you which books they're in as well well, when we get to them it's fine sure uh demon hunter monk Mystic Warrior uh, and Werewolf. I don't even know where the werewolf is. Mm-hmm. It says rule book. Oh, is yeah, it this rule book? I don't know how you buy them, but there must be some way of getting them because the werewolves are be in them, yeah. the bestiary. Yeah. Oh, I guess. No, are they? Yeah, okay. I guess they are. Yeah. They don't come up very often, but they're there. Yep. And then these are the old ones. And then in Blood Legacy. Oh. Can show you these books. I don't know why I haven't mm-hmm. been showing you here, but uh, there are a couple more soldiers uh, who, uh, which are Blood Merchant, Sword Master, Vampire Hunter, and yeah. So these are the new books that don't require. They tell you it's a special soldier. You don't have to look it up in the back of the the second yeah. edition rule book. Oh, and then Fireheart also has Construct Familiar, Construct Hound, Scrounger, and Tinkerer. Mm-hmm. So let's go through the old ones, then we'll talk about the new ones first. That next. Sure. So Captain is in the Frostgrave Folio, and in my opinion, don't use this Captain. It's, it's like, the Captain is because a lot of people wanted a special, like, they wanted... A, a, like a, a, a guy who can do a whole bunch of different things. With abilities, like they wanted yeah. They wanted a knight instead of a wizard. And mm-hmm. so the captain has all of these different abilities uh, that they can recruit. They take XP, and they get upgraded, and they end up, you know, if you recruit... And they, they, they reduce your amount of gold you get. Uh, and if you do level them up, they actually end up being pretty good. But to me, there's a couple of things. Like the Bard, they take away from the, the the setting centering on wizards. And they're overly complicated for what you get. Whereas at the very end, they're not really unbalanced. So they end up being only a little bit better than a knight. But it takes a lot more paperwork to deal with it. It takes a lot more paperwork. Mm-hmm. Work, takes away from the centrality of the wizards. Uh, and they actually reduce your overall uh, you know, money going into your warband, so it makes your overall warband a little bit weaker until, I guess, the very, very end. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like I, and your, items your opponent so cool. has to know the rules too, right? Because, yeah. you know, you're using it against them. So to me, I would just not use the captain. Uh, to me, it 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 it's not a great. Uh, if you want, if you want guys that can mix it up in close combat and stuff, play Stargraved or or, or better yet, Rangers or Shadow D, which unfortunately, well, it's single player, but or, or sorry, co- uh, uh, co-op. Co-op. Yeah, but that has a much better version of knights uh, in in that in that setting in the way that he did them, which centers around them. Well, technically not knights, Rangers, but mm-hmm. you can make a knight character. Yeah, where they have lots of cool close combat abilities. Yeah, they have heavy armor, close combat abilities, don't have any guns and stuff like that. Or, sorry, ranged weapons. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so, so, 
No, so nay ignore to the captain. captain. Nay, captain, don't use it. I'm warning you. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want to use the captain. It sounds so cool. Uh, resist the urge. Just play for Osgrave, especially if you're starting out. Mm-hmm. Uh, college right, Porter, Collegium Porter, they're amazing. Uh, but you need a book or you need a control rod and then you need to control magic uh, sorry control construct the collegium porter so it's all so, special stuff that only comes up in maze of melkor it's not yeah. just otherwise don't it's not really available yeah yeah okay. but if all you right. can get it get it like if, if mm-hmm. you can if you can jank that out like if for example if you are already had control construct yeah totally try and grab a collegium porter if you have get that control rod as a magical item Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the next one is, in my opinion, the best of the old ones. Demon Hunter. Is this broken? It is kind of broken. Yeah. So it's basically just uh, a better version of uh, Marksman. So mm-hmm. they have six Cross. fight. Mm-hmm. They have two a crossbow. They have, but they sorry they not six fight six move two fight two shoot but they have a two handed close combat weapon and the crossbow yeah like that 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 you don't get to have the best like damage weapon and the best shooting damage weapon on one person in this regular table out of the and crossbow he's just book. as good as shooting as the marksman the marksman yeah. used to be three shoot but now the marksman is two shoot. Yeah, so it's only, a, it's only 100 gold versus, like, the 125 of the other top-tier stuff. Like, what? what is yeah, this? I'm not done. Demon Hunter also gets plus one fight and plus one damage against demons. And uh-huh. the plus one fight doesn't help for shooting, but it really helps in close combat. Plus Both plus one fight and plus one damage. So he's really good at damaging demons. Uh... It just doesn't make sense to me that he's also better at shooting than uh, the crosswoman. I took him. Uh, he's he is ends up being amazing, especially when you fight demons. So, so in my opinion, him, should he be banned? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, or weakened. To me, if he had, what I would do is I would make his I would make him make his shooting worse. Mm-hmm. And Poss, I don't know if his fight should be worse. It almost is better if his fight and shoot are worse. Mm-hmm. So it's like both. one fight, one shoot. Yeah. But he has both the pro, but he gets plus two fight. Just even give him plus two fight, plus two shoot against demons. Mm-hmm. And he still has the plus two. So then he's really good weapons. against demons, yeah. but he's useful against other things, right? Yeah. Something like that would make more sense. Even two fight and and one shoot would, mm-hmm. would be fine. Just something like that. He's he's way too good right now. Um, yeah, like he he destroys the marksman. He's less expensive and he's just like he's technically more expensive if you have any summoner uh, stuff. Mm-hmm. But again, this is like a rare thing. So to yeah. to me, I would avoid him. Uh, yeah, he negates certain profiles entirely for like. Yeah, I, I would I would say I would not use him without mm-hmm. some tweaks. But preferred one is at, at a minimum plus one, making the shoot plus one instead. And may, so if if you change it so he got if he's two fight, one shoot, and then he gets plus one fight, plus one shoot, plus one damage against demons, then mm-hmm. at least there's a reason to take a marksman, right, over him. Yep. Um all right, so that's the Demon Hunter, mm-hmm. uh, which is very good. But don't if, take if it. People are okay you, with taking it. <laughs> I think he just needs to be, yeah, he's just a bit powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monk, uh, this guy's garbage. Uh, don't take him. He's just terrible. He's from Forgotten Packs. Mm-hmm. He, he's, he doesn't, he's like the Barbarian. He has no armor. Yep. Uh, but he also has no benefits. So instead, he has a bladed staff, which gives him plus one defense, uh, plus one armor in close combat, but plus one damage. But the bladed staff doesn't even count as a normal staff. So if you pick up a good staff, you can't even give it to him. It counts as a different weapon. Well, if you get a magic so, staff, can't even use it. 
Yeah, so mm -hmm. this guy needs a lot of work. Otherwise, you are only taking him because you have a cool monk model. Yeah. And it kind of annoys me because why does the monk model have a bladed staff? Like, mm. shouldn't you just have, like, the normal thing is just to have a staff. They train generally with, with normal staffs. So, with normal staves, it's weird that, you know, this guy has a bladed staff. That's just a personal thing. At the same time, the artwork in Forgotten Packs for that monk is awesome. So, <laughs> maybe you should take him just for, but again, this guy is the opposite of the Demon Hunter. He needs a little bit of a buff. Otherwise, he's terrible. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. My, my thought is make his staff a normal staff. And, you know, you have if, you, if it's a normal staff, you can do the whole leaping on the staff thing, so ignore two inches of vertical movement. But again, like... Nah, you gotta make it well three so you can staff. jump the walls. You just jump people's that's walls. That's just our walls. Like, no, no. Oh, walls are three. Yes. Oh, ignore the first three inches? Oh, that's super powerful, though. Yeah, well... He's kind of junk otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that is true. He is kind of junk otherwise. So maybe that's what he needs. Mm -hmm. And then he can jump over uh, the wall spell. Um, all right, so that is the monk. The mystic warrior. So he has 11 armor. He has no weapons but four fight. But his special thing is that he counts as having magical attacks. Which time. is, I don't know, that seems almost broken good. But like how, how bad it is but, to get hit by an early early on in the game. If you yeah. get hit with one of the enemies that's immune to magic, like mm -hmm. they don't call it incorporeal, but it's like kind of like incorporeal, that you just have to like kind of run away unless you've got magic shooting attacks. Whereas this like fixes that problem altogether where you have some, sure, someone but who's he's not worse. Your he's even worse mm -hmm. than a barbarian in close combat. Yep. So, so, although, yeah, so to me, I feel like Mystic Warrior, mm -hmm. um, I think he's he's fine just because he's, you know, he's, you are paying for his ability to deal with those things. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think it's like, it's, it's fine because, you know, he has his niche yep. in a normal combat. He's actually going to be worse than your, your Barbarian. Or, you, uh, yeah, he's going to be worse than your Barbarian mm -hmm. against your opponent's Warband, except for the fact he has no items, so he can he doesn't get a minus one when he picks up a treasure. Uh, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. But so, so later, to in the, me, later in the game, once you buy magic weapons for a few yeah. guys, you're like, eh, maybe he's not fulfilling much of a role anymore. Yeah, he can still, though, because he doesn't have to take a magic weapon, he can mm -hmm. take magic armor or, or magic items and still be able to deal with them. So he's still useful in the end game. Uh, even, you know, uh, but again, it's for, you know, scenarios where you have that kind of issue. Mm -hmm. You need magic weapons. And again, his art is awesome. Mystic Warrior, two-fisted magic hands of justice. That's great. Uh, he's also in Forgotten Packs. Uh, so I personally think he's fine. But, uh, yeah. I could see your point in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you're relying on your, your wizard, right? In the early game. To yeah. deal with these magical threats. Yeah, it could kind of unbalance some people. I don't think it really unbalances. It's not like the mm -hmm. Demon Hunter. No, it's not It's not crazy like that. Yeah. And anyways, if you if you don't take the spells that let you like get magic weapons, or you choose not to take magic shooting attacks, yeah, maybe there's a way that you don't have to take those specific spells, and instead you can just take this guy and not be as worried. Yeah. So. Or take mind control mind control one wraith to kill the other wraith hmm. yes all right um so the last one i believe from the old ones is the werewolf which is i believe you actually there's a there's a book of werewolf or something in this one there there wasn't the old one mm -hmm. but we've never rolled it up in the new the new book so maybe it's still there so which book uh, but is you this? can recruit is this... a werewolf I think it's just a rule book. It's an item, I believe. Yeah. That allows you to recruit a werewolf. Werewolves mm -hmm. are good. They're fast. They're fast and and Yeah, I think you have to But you, but you can't just buy them right away. Like Yeah, so like there's seven move, fight four, armor eleven, willpower five, health twelve with expert climber, which means they climb 
normally. I guess you could just give the monk bucks for climber. Uh, mm-hmm. So they're really good if you can take them. Uh, but you again, you have to have the special item to take them, so you don't have to worry about that unless you get the special item, and then definitely recruit them. Mm-hmm. All right. So on to the next one. Because that's not going to. That's just, unlikely for people to get that one. But yeah, if you do, go for it. All the mm-hmm. ones, honestly, every single one where you need to get an item to recruit that that thing, use them because they're good. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically yep. it. Uh, all right, so now on to the thing that kind of uh, okay. So the first thing is Fireheart has a bunch of uh, um, uh, more soldiers. All of these are based around this entire book is dedicated to one school, the uh, the construct school, elementalist. Yeah. What? No, not the, the construct school. Oh. No, the construct school. Now, now you messed me up. Not the summoner. Not the enchanter. Uh, enchanter. Yes, mm-hmm. it's the this, this entire book is for enchanting stuff. So there's like, um, all of these guys, these soldiers are for if you have an enchanter. So basically, you can kind of ignore them. Otherwise, technically, you can recruit a construct hound, which is just like a a, a variant of a warhound. Uh, where it's one slower, but it's a construct instead, which means oh, and it has two a uh, ten health. So uh, I don't know if this is better than a normal hound. Just the plus one movement is the reason why you take a hound. But technically, you can take this guy uh, and put him in your kennel. So it's an alternative. Uh, that's the only thing we haven't used it, so he's probably fine. But all the other guys, basically, if you're a con, if if you, if one person is playing an enchanter, sure, I guess if if you're okay with your enchanter getting a whole bunch of buffs, because honestly, the, um, we'll get to it. But the constructs are, they're fine. They're good at the beginning, but then once you start, uh, comparing them to soldiers with with magical items, constructs can't have magical items, so they start falling behind. And then you need to some way to bring them back up, and that's what this whole book is for. Yeah. Right? So it's not. So you would say that book is not not broken to allow enchanters to use. No. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll have to pick that up. We'll see. And then the last thing is Blood Legacy has mm-hmm. a bunch of guys. Now, this actually kind of. Just looking at the guys in in this, it kind of pissed me off. So Blood Merchant is fine because vampires can't take um, the healing guys. Oh, we didn't talk about. Okay, whatever. There's there's also Revenant in in Thought of the Lich Lord that you can that you need need a a book to use, and Mm -hmm. but they're just it's the same exact same thing. Use them if you have that spell. Uh, but Blood Merchant is basically just a replacement for vampires. If you take a vampire, so literally you don't use this unless unless it's a vampire. Again, it's special just if you use the special vampire class in this book. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about it until you've played a bunch of games. And then you're like, oh, I want to do a vampire. Uh, the uh, There's a bunch of giant blooded soldiers. And I think these are generally fine in terms of their modifications. Um, they cost a lot more, but they're slower. But okay. they are also, and and they're easier to hit because they're large. But they have extra health. And you don't need so to be a vampire as a leader to take them. No, these are just like super big kind of guys. I think generally they're probably going to be fine because they're they're quite expensive. And mm-hmm. honestly, I'm not sure overall if they're actually better than the normal guys just because they're slow for the game you're doing like they will do they have the larger role yes i don't know so they're easier to hit interesting yeah yeah so i don't know if they're actually i think they're probably fine but again we haven't played these so we don't know and um but then the the the, the things that bug me are the last two guys all right so the sword master and the vampire hunter hunter is like be wary about that apparently 
so the Swordmaster is move 6, fight 4, armor 11, plus 1, will, health 12. The Swordmaster is basically just a better man-at-arms. Oh, no, actually, that's 11 armor. It's supposed to 12 armor. And, and he's a specialist soldier, not a standard soldier? He's a specialist. Okay. So he's close to the man-at-arms, so you don't... Are you really gaining that much by taking him over a man-at-arms? You as one are. Of your slots? He has plus 1 fight. Oh. And he also has armor opponent armor reduction so he actually is for anyone with he reduces opponent's armor by one to a mm-hmm. minimum of 10 yeah so for a lot of guys he's fighting he's gonna actually do plus one damage versus other guys so you're comparing him to a knight then but just like faster yes mm-hmm. uh i think he's probably ends up being okay but as it stands if if he existed you need to upgrade the barbarian because he would just be a better barbarian he only has one will, though, so I guess there's that. Oh, you're comparing like, him to the man-at-arms. Does he have a sword and shield? No, actually, he only has 11 armor, so he's actually uh, not okay. man-at-arms. Okay. But he has four fight. He does the plus mm-hmm. one damage. Uh, he also can't get teamed up on. I think he can. you can only ever maximum get plus two when you team up on him. Mm-hmm. So you can't surround him by four guys. So he's actually quite good. I think he's he's probably fine, but he will make people not take barbarians in my opinion if he exists Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't unless you buff the barbarian by giving a ranged weapon to me it's another one of those things that shouldn't exist because there's already something equivalent but obviously it becomes redundant Mm -hmm. yeah i don't think you need i think the biggest thing is that if you have a cool model that looks like a sword master i guess technically there's nothing in the old Mm -hmm. in the main rule book he can only be a man at arms Oh, actually, a sword master is just with one light weapon. Yeah, it's a Templarish or whatever. Yeah, yeah but that's a two-handed weapon. So, like, uh, a sword master is just one one weapon, right? Mm-hmm. And light armor. So I think it's really just to take it to look cool. I just feel like he has too many special rules. I think this guy, this guy was overloaded. I didn't mm-hmm. think he needs all of these things to make him comparable, right? To have him a, have a slot. Just the plus one speed with fight four gives him a slot. Yeah. Uh, so like six fight, sorry, six move, fight four, uh, and eleven armor, twelve health. Um, all right. The last thing is the vampire hunter. You know how we said that the demon hunter is broken? Yeah. This guy's even more broken. It's like being Buffy and having blood armor. You're like, oh, we can't. Yes. Oh, uh-huh, vampires! Exactly. I can't lose. This guy is 125. Six move, fight three, shoot two, armor oh. 11, will two, health 12. He has a hand weapon and a crossbow. So he's just better than a marksman. Just fight three and mm. shoot two. What What is this? I, I don't understand this. Just the sh- fight three, shoot two with the, the, the crossbow means he, yeah. and, and movement six. He's just better than a, a marksman. I don't know why this guy exists. This guy is... Well, you know how I said the Ranger is the best unit in the game? Mm-hmm. Technically, if you have this, if you run with this guy, he probably is the best unit in the game. Oh, I'm not done. Uh, uh, he also uh, is immune to energy drain. So against undead, mm-hmm. he, he doesn't get tw- two damage. You know, unde- a lot of undead do double damage. He does not take double damage. Mm-hmm. Poor frost. Uh, poor ice toads. He gets plus will. I think he gets plus three will if a vampire is on the table. And the worst thing mm. is he has magic attacks against undead. So you know how you said that the mystic warrior is broken? Most of the things that are oh immune to magic are undead. So he can shoot them, are we saying? Oh and they... God. I think that, magic is attacks... Is that how it's worded? Applies to everything? So in theory, you can just poke across the table and just destroy the like one health banshees. Like, is this is this where we're going with this? You know what? What we're going is don't use this guy. This guy's totally broken. I don't understand. No, in combat. Okay. So at least he can't shoot them with a crossbow. Mm-hmm. I would not use the Vampire Hunter. Vampire Hunter is a broken profile. Uh, it needs so much fixing. I would rather have a general hunter profile. General like demon, demon hunter. Undead, demon undead hunter. Demon hunter. No, Vampire Hunter. I don't mm-hmm. think there should be an undead hunter. Yeah. 
Demon Hunter, Vampire Hunter. You can even be have a Beast Hunter. Uh, mm-hmm. Or a Bear Hunter. Maybe Beast is, is too wide. Or even Where they Tracker have, a, have that ability too. Like, who knows? A tracker have... Yeah, exactly. So, so something like that. Um, where they're all similar, or they're all the same profile, so they hunt something different, and you balance them out. That, to me, is ideal. Because both the Demon Hunter and the Vampire Hunter are broken. This, this cannot go. Mm-hmm. So, in my opinion... Uh, considering the Demon Hunter is better, sorry, the the Vampire Hunter is better than the Demon Hunter, and I think the Demon Hunter is broken. Now we haven't used the Vampire Hunter. Um, I I don't think we should be using Vampire Hunters. No, probably not. All the profiles guess, are just completely maybe, over. Right, other maybe ones. the Vampire Hunter. You should. I could see an argument saying that the the Vampire Hunter is only recruitable. If you're in a campaign where there's a vampire, mm-hmm. there's a player who's playing a vampire, and yeah. the vampire player cannot recruit the vampire hunter. Otherwise, it just becomes good while they bring their own vampires. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. Exactly. You know what? Yeah. Okay, so have we gone through all of these like additional possible soldiers? Yes, and there's new ones coming out in the new expansion, but obviously mm-hmm. we can't go over them. So I don't know from from our discussion of these extra soldiers available. It's almost sounding like they can do more harm than good. I think I think that's possibly true. Um, I know it's a blunt force like resolution. Just be like, get rid of them all because either you're taking something crappy or you're taking something way too much better. The number of like nice or, in between or ones just is... take small one, just small number of them. Mm, put a limit limit on them possibly. Mm. So. I, I would kind of agree. To me, I would do Mystic Warrior. Uh, Javelinier. Javelinier. Mm-hmm. Blood. Uh, Crowmaster. And Pack Mule. Okay. Pack Mule is fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I honestly like the idea of another of another unit having a crossbow, but it would it would it's not any of the profiles that we've seen. So, mm-hmm. so <laughs> having then, a one sh- uh, a crossbow with a plus one shoot is would be interesting, but this, mm-hmm. you, we'd have to make it up. So yeah, exactly. So I, I think maybe the only best thing you could do is say the people you're playing the campaign with should probably agree to use these extras. Do you remember what it says in the book in that section about these? Other book soldiers, like whether you, often whether you oh whether, whether you you're obliged talk with your to allow them or yeah because there's lots of things in Frostgrave they're like oh here's an optional thing for crits here's this like optional book of mutations you can go crazy with and figure out think of your own way to use it so the question is like in the Frostgrave appendix that talks about supplements mm-hmm. da, da, da. so so here's the thing I would say mm-hmm. I. I would say talk with your opponents is number one, right? Because then you can just choose exactly mm-hmm. what you want. And and for us, I think the four that we just said, uh, besides the ones that come from, from items, like where you need items, I think you should be able to take those. Yeah. But uh, of the rest of them, those four are fine. Um, so and, if you're talking with your group, don't worry about those ones. Those ones are neat, but the yeah, other ones, to me, like... yeah, to me, those ones are fine. The other, but the things outside of those, you you probably need to talk uh, mm-hmm. with your your opponents. And then, if you can't agree, I would rather not use any of them except for the ones that come from items, than yeah. use all of them. Mm-hmm. And then the last one is, the last caveat is, technically, even though I think that the demon hunter is too good. I don't think it is so too good that it breaks the game. It's just a little bit unbalanced, right? They're just a, they're just strong, and they also uh, uh, make uh, like make marksmen look crappy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I would say you, if you really want to, or if someone really, really wants to, don't feel like it's going to ruin your game just to do it. Like maybe if you, if someone really wants to give in, have them play it out, and then hopefully you guys can hash out whether it works for you or not afterwards. That mm-hmm. said, that vampire, I have no idea how the vampire hunter is not broken. Yeah, 
I think if you put Vampire Hunter in, like, you will have three Vampire Hunters and a Ranger, or three Vampire Hunters and a Treasure Hunter, it, like, every single time. They're so, such a strong profile. Yeah, they they get you the best of both worlds of the shooting you only get from your specialists, and they get you good fighter, like... Yeah, or a decent there's no, fighter. There's no compromise. You, you don't have to make a compromise. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah. Overall, that that's basically... We've gone through all the supplemental uh, soldiers as well. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any last thoughts about the all of these things uh maybe we we last time in in uh, the first episode we talked about starting war bands do you want to mm-hmm. talk about general ending war bands that you generally would take so i think we mentioned in the first one that you probably still want to have like two ranged units minimum so i would say yes yeah yeah so the question is do you start with the two ranged units maybe but then towards the end, you want two or three. Going all four just seems like you're just being lazy and sitting back and shooting, and maybe your opponents you are going to be probably, worried about, about you, you have, having a bias of terrain. Anyway. There's that, and also, if you have four units that shoot, mm-hmm. um, you can get really shut down by certain spells, like Fog and Wall yeah. might just mm-hmm. shut you out entirely. Yeah. Uh, so you do have to be worried about that. I wouldn't Invis- probably at maximum do three. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. So that's um, one overall strategy. Mm-hmm. But four, four is actually technically fine. But your opponents are, if they know you're going to do that, and they get fog, they can really shut you down hard. Mm-hmm. Um. So besides that, uh. For me, my final thing is generally two rangers. Uh, my current warband is two rangers and a demon hunter. That's that's why I've, I've been playing with this demon hunter, and I'm like, this is kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could see a ranger and a marksman, or technically two two rangers and a marksman. That's that's something you know. I I do like the kind of sitting back targeting things, and and like you said, the rangers can can mix it up so they can move in shoot grab treasure run off kind of thing yeah so i find them great um Mm -hmm. the other things that i do like is well my last guy is a barbarian uh and because barbarians are just uh look cool yep yeah yeah, if you like playing that sort of look of army just like nope this is the look of the army yeah they have some shirtless buff person and they uh they're a barbarian of course they're not armored they've got to be a barbarian yeah uh when i took a stronger overall thing i had two rangers a treasure hunter and a knight that to me is a solid specialist and then you have mm-hmm. uh i think like i said three men at arms or two men at arms a thief or uh, or three two to three men at arms a thief and then an apothecary yeah, and if you only go for the two shooters, maybe you want to make sure your wizard has a good shooting spell as well to yeah. kind of get you some good ranged power going on. So. Yeah, the strongest shooting one is uh, Elemental Ball, which is just Fireball, but you can use it as a Lightning Ball, I guess. Uh, and then also a really good one is Grenade. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, yeah. so those are... Uh, yeah, so that's a general kind of idea of, of what you generally want. If you want to to eschew all shooting, man, you can have a really good close combat thing. Two treasure hunters, two knights. Oh, that if you, really if you ditch all your shooting, you just go full on with combat? Yeah, you'll yeah, need you spells to, to catapult your guys. Yeah, like, like invisibility lead. possibly as well. Invisibility so is only on your own guy. Okay. But... Uh, if you you'll probably need to be able to support with some magical shooting with your own guy, and then mm-hmm. have leaping spells like leap, uh, fleet feet, transpose, and, and a bunch of those to make it really work. But that could be really strong as well. Yeah, you don't tickets. need shooting, and especially there's a lot of strong shooting uh, range spells like mind control. We keep on talking about mind control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mind control your enemies' ranged guys and use them for your shooting. 
Yeah, why not? Oh, this game is so good. Um, I think there's one last thing that we forgot to talk about. Um, there are spells in the main rule book that gives you units. And we should know this are. because both of technically us. the best, yeah, we're both running them. And technically the actual best standard soldier is a bear. Yeah, I have two of those. <laughs> it's, it's in the beginning of the game, they're like near the power of a knight. And at the end of the game, no, they're Oh, they, we said they're they better count than as, a knight. We they're said better they count than a knight. As, yeah, we said they just count as standard soldiers too, did we not? Yes, they're not at the beginning game. All the way through the game, they're better than a knight. They have uh, movement six, fight four. Uh, they do plus two damage because they're strong. They have 12 armor and they have 14 life, and they can as a standard soldier. And by the book, they will have three willpower because they get plus three. So they're like, they're, their only negative is they can't pick up treasure. But oh, and they're never, large. But you never paid large, any of your treasure money. You never paid any yes. treasure money to bring them into your war band anyways. So they so die. they are like, totally oh, broken. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're one of the things that we had to go through and fix. Uh, we did change it uh, so it has zero willpower. So now basically when someone takes a bear, you have to deal with them with spells. Like mind control. But with a plus three will, it was ridiculous. They were way too strong. Yeah. Um and they're also the strongest of the, the choices by far. So um, I think because they do, you know, like they might also make sense to, li- like right now they're one per spellcaster, but it might make sense to have one debuff them band. even more mm-hmm. in one per band. If we need yeah. to do it, make it one per warband. Or, or like, you can only have one of each type per warband, which means that at least a a witch will not have two bears, which you will see everywhere. You don't have to be even a witch. A person with... Uh, they can get witch spells. Will Yeah, can get witch spells. We'll eventually uh, get them. We'll have two bears. Yeah, because they're so strong. They're they're way too strong for a standard soldier. Even, a, even as a, a specialist soldier, they're strong. So with a plus three will. So to me, min- at minimum... Strip away the plus three well for the bears on that thing. Yeah. Well, I guess if you're gonna abuse one thing in Frostgrave, maybe don't abuse everything. Like I abused <laughs> the bear. Corner. I have vampire hunters. Yeah, exactly. You, you abused. You got one bear. I, anyways, you could have abused the bears too. You took it. You took the bear abuse route. No, I have two bears. That's, oh, okay. So you abused that, and you're abusing. The vampire hunter. I'm just abusing bears. Oh, demon, hunter. Did, demon, hunter. demon hunters. I didn't even take the elemental ball, which is kind of the most abusive shooting spell, too. You have to so. debuff it if you're not an elementalist. Are you an elementalist? No. Because it's 12. It starts at 12. So you got to have to debuff mm-hmm. it to, to, to a castable. But yes, the elemental mm-hmm. ball is the strongest shooting spell yeah. in the game. So, you know. Um, and then I guess the last thing is you can also get... Oh, all of the things that get let you get warband, like spells... Uh, that don't take warband slots, they're all good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the one, the other one that takes but, warband slots is control is construct construct, and that stays with your warband because a lot of the ones where you summon it yeah. don't stick with you game to game. But mm-hmm. yeah, summon construct sticks with you, and the construct probably not as strong as the bear by a little ways. Yeah, so basically you will be replacing them with medium constructs. Mm-hmm. So is the standard soldier. Uh, medium constructs are okay. They their their big thing is they're a little bit more sturdy. They don't get wounded, right? But you will find them just end up being they'll end up being worse than a at arms with an item. Mm-hmm. So you have to or you have to deal with that somehow. Like for example, using the fire hard, hard book, or um, yeah, I don't I don't know why you you, you can't cast spells on them. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. like enchant weapon or enchant enchant armor, but at least um, I guess you might be able to save some cash early on if yeah. you're trying not to pay the fifty or seventy five gold for man arms and infantrymen. So yeah, and then you can also get a large construct, mm-hmm. uh, that. but that's a specialist soldier and it only moves four. Ooh. So they're super slow. Uh, they're, they're I think they are really tough. So I guess if you use transpose, there might be okay. But 
to me, like, they're just worse than Knights. I think they only have fight three, too. They're just super tough. Yep. So, they're not really one to replace your guys with, unless you're at the very beginning, and you don't I have don't know, cash. I know they're fight four. Oh, okay. So, basically, so, they're, so early game, I can see them having a nice place. They're, they're actually like bears, except they have plus one armor. Uh, and they're specialists. Oh, and they're minus at minus two speed to a bear. Yeah. Oh God, they're so yeah. So they're like bears, but much worse. Mhm. So I mean, if you really want to play with the construct, you can. But later in the campaign, you're probably not yeah. so well served. Yeah. To me, by them. it's kind of weird because like with Fireheart, that makes them somewhat more interesting because. Fireheart gives them up, uh, allows them to be upgradable, so they can technically have basically the equivalent of magical item. Um, but without them, they're they're kind of weak. So I don't know. I, I mm-hmm. wonder if it's one of those things where like J- Joe McCullough was like, "Yeah, I know they're weak. That's why you should buy buy my next supplement." Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and now we're actually done all of the soldiers. Mm-hmm. And so future episodes, I guess we're going to start working our way deeper into talk of spell schools. Yes, and we'll go and talk about the witch, the strongest and best spell school. Uh, but that'll be last. We're going to go from the front to the back, which means the witch as a W is the last one. Will we or won't we? <laughs> Whatever. We don't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, but that has been this second episode of uh, Frostgrave 101. So if you have any questions about things that you want us to dive into, uh, give us a shout. Like we said, our next plan is to just go through the 10 different schools um, and then probably talk a bit about uh, all the different books at the very end uh, and, and the different campaigns. But yeah, that is uh, our plan. If you have any questions about the game at all you can give us a shout and we'll definitely answer you or you have questions for us about anything Mm -hmm. give us a shout we will endeavor to try to answer you you can email us at contact at diceovereverything.com or find us on facebook or dice over everything this has been alan yeah it's been brandon bye